Keep thinking it's going to start a song. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So welcome to today's podcast. Uh, we have Cody here, and he is from uh, Section Games. And um, you wanted to wave, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um, um, and he recently uh, presented El Chicle at PAX. So we're going to ask him a few questions. Do you, do you have a list of questions? I do have a list of what? questions. What? So, it's hashtag official. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're all, they're all labeled and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, the first question is, when did you start Section Games, and how many are, how many people are in the company? Uh, we started this uh, last February, actually. So, we've only been together for a couple months now. Uh, right now, we have three people. Myself, John LeBron, and Bradley Renstra. Um, Bradley's a programmer, John's a level designer, and I am the lead designer slash marketing guy. So. Yeah. And... Uh, the next question was, uh, what do you do for the game? But yeah, the guy just wrote that down. Yeah. Uh, what Same programs again. do you use? Uh, right now we're using uh, a pre well, sorry, a custom-made engine in AGK uh, 2.0, and I'm using Spine for the animation, which is a 2D-based animation program that just came out this year. Um, John is doing a, he's using a level editor that Bradley custom-made himself for the game. Uh, so a lot of it's just been stuff we've been able to tailor make for ourselves. The only thing, the only biggest thing was learning Spine, which there's no tutorial videos yet for it, so I had to kind of just wing it. Yeah, there's no uh, tutorials and digital tutors yet. No <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> really told me about it. Yeah. Huh. Um, did you ever want to be something else, like a program or a level designer or whatever? Uh, I was thinking about doing programming when I first came to the school, but I just realized that, honestly, it's, it's not something I can enjoy doing for a long period of time. I mean, it's kind of cool to know it, and it makes you feel really smart, but... It's just, if I had to sit there and program all day, I'm pretty sure I'd kill myself. Yeah. So do, are you in the programming major, or are you in the design major? No, I'm in the design major. Okay. I, I just figured I was going to try to, like, take extra classes for programming, too, just so I knew more about it. Yeah. But I decided against that, because I'm like, I can't do this. Yeah, so. that's what that's what I thought. That's yeah. what I wanted to do, too. But I was like, nah, this is too hard. It's just not worth it. It's not fun to me. It really isn't. Yeah. Let's uh, draw pictures with code. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question is, uh, what is El Chicle about? Uh, El Chicle, you actually played as a discarded piece of taco-flavored gum that was special ordered by a high school student. So he's chewing you on his way to school. Uh, on the bus, he realizes he doesn't like it, but he doesn't want to spit it off on the bus. So he gets out, and he spits you off into the snow. And he goes into his high school, and he just completely forgets about you. But the thing he messed up on is that nobody spits out El Chicle. So the whole point of the game is you want to get into the school, find the student while getting as dirty as possible, and jump back into his mouth to make him throw. Okay. Uh, what are the, the mechanics of the game? It's a, um, it's, a pu- it's a jump puzzle game uh, with the mechanics of somewhat like a uh, mixture between Angry Birds and Super Meat Boy. Okay. It's static movement like Angry Birds where you use trajectory and angles, uh, but the whole point is to do the difficult jump puzzles of that of Meat Boy. Obviously, it's not as fast-paced as Meat Boy because you don't have the actual set movement of him, mm-hmm. but it's, it's supposed to be more of a Super Meat Boy where you're, you're counting your jumps instead of just trying to get to it as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. You want to get through the level with the least amount of jumps, so you want to know the angles. You want to be like, well, I can angle this here at like a 45-degree angle, and that will let me get past two walls. Um, a lot of it is when you play, you'll, you'll realize it and stuff like that. Okay, so is it like timed? But if you have the least amount of time, you get more? Yeah, there, we actually have different weights for each score. Uh, we're not going to really talk about them yet just because we want people to figure them out so they can realize how to get the highest score later. Okay. Um, but the, the point is, is that there's, uh, we, we base off of time, number of jumps, how dirty you are, and how much water you have left. Okay. Um, and there's going to be a multiplayer added in later where it's going to add in more functions on that, so... That's cool. Uh, let's see what's the next question. Uh, oh, so tell us the success you had at PAX about LG Clay. Um, we had a lot of people try out the game. I think we ended up seeing right around four to 500 people throughout the weekend, which, I mean, it's pretty good for Becker Booth. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the, the biggest thing is for us is we were also walking around the convention with the game, so we saw people that even didn't come over to the booth. So that's why we met so many people. And the game was... People loved it. Uh, the, the game was obviously good for the context of that, and if we show people the demo outside of PAX, it doesn't really fit. Um, so we've had a lot of issues with that, people trying it out, and they're like, oh, this doesn't really make sense. It's like, well, it was kind of for, we were working with the people as they were playing, so we set it up that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but people loved the game. We 
got, I think, out of all those people, three things that people didn't like. And they were just little things, like some, some were saying the first level was too long, in which we've, we've taken into account and we're actually messing with it right now. But honestly, it was, it was mostly positive. We loved, we loved the feedback from people, and people were actually asking us if they could buy the game right there. Nice. So. How much are you going to sell it for? We're, we're not completely set on a price yet. We're looking around probably at uh, $2 on the store, depending how much we put into it. We're planning on having around 100 levels in the game. Okay. Um, we're shooting for about 50 to 60 right now, but we want to obviously build off of that. So depending on the time it takes, we're going to have to base the price off of that. So, But we will be giving free versions of the demo out throughout the summer, where we're going to be doing uh, live Twitch streamings of the development of the game, where people can give us input and they can actually watch their features be put into the game, um, as long as you know they're logical and we agree upon them. Uh, and then they'll actually get a free version of that game uh, at the end of the Twitch stream. Oh, nice. Yep. Um, so, was it difficult to start your own company? Um, I think the most difficult thing was finding people that were all on the same page. We've made a couple projects with other people in the school, and they don't really have the work ethic um, set up, which is not, not to say they're bad people. It wasn't anything against them as a person. It's just it didn't seem like they had everything in a focus that they should right now. They need to realize, you know, this is your career. This is, this has to be the time frame thing. Uh, so for us, it was just trying to find the people who we felt were good enough um, and could put in the work and the time to really push this game. But we also wanted to keep it small. We only wanted about three or four people. Um, and we'll grow from there depending on what the games require, but we're pretty happy with what we have. Yeah, yeah, because we, we have our own company, mm-hmm. you know that. Uh, and this podcast is basically about the struggles and success that you got that we have as we're making our own companies because people don't know how hard it is to make like a company. They think that you can make a game and it's going to be super successful and that's it. And everyone's like, oh, I, I got the name, so we're basically like, we're already in the door. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the biggest thing I would say uh, to anyone wanting to start a company, don't worry about the company as a whole yet make sure you have an idea that's worth that's worth it and is, is fun because if you don't have that there's no reason to even look into a company and like Yarbro is telling us you know don't don't forget the fun along the way there's a couple of times where we've made alterations to El Chico and then we've gone and played and we're like it's not it's not fun anymore so yeah. we've actually had to revert it back and take a different path and I think a lot of people they they get so set on deadlines that they rush towards it and that's probably the biggest difficulty is realizing whoa our game's not fun anymore. We need to revert back, and I'm sure you guys have seen that plenty yeah. of times. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've had a lot. Of we've had a few that. games, and then we're only doing one now. Mm-hmm. And the, the point is, the work, the work ethic you talked about, yeah. uh, some people just don't have it, and we have a larger group. And mainly the only reason we have a larger group is because I'm trying to make sure I feel almost responsible. That everyone makes it and yeah. everyone does well. Yeah, I've, I've been in that boat too. And my situation there is I was thinking on the, the context of once I make it, I'll be able to help everybody mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Like now that I have more connections, I've been passing my friends off to people I know and tr- trying to build that way. Because once you get too big of a group, yeah. uh, it gets difficult. To, you have to have like a strong leadership that everyone respects. And we weren't able to really find that before. We just wanted to keep it organic. So, Okay. Uh, so the next question is, um, did you make any mistakes along the way? No. <laughs> um, no, they were perfect. Super perfect. Um, I mean, there, there was plenty of mistakes, just different things. Like, uh, moving from a 3D medium to full 2D, um, especially in the art style for me, was very difficult. Yeah. And I think some of the biggest mistakes we made was just because we jumped right into 3D where you're just like, oh, um, as long as I keep it with X polygons, I'll be fine because it'll be able, I'll be able to rig it and it'll, it won't, you know, crash the system. Um, because, you know, as long as I keep around 2,000, 3,000 for that style of game, you're good to go. So you have set numbers for the 3D because you know what the engine will take. So when it comes to 2D, you're trying, one of the biggest things that was my mistake was realizing which, which art, like our assets can be scaled. Because, you know, if you have a background for a start menu, you can make the background a freaking 12 by 12 pixel if it's one solid color and then expand it because if it's one solid color, it's not going to you know, blur as long as the edges are off the screen. Yeah. And because it reads that way, it actually is less load on the system if, it's, you know, if it follows the suit that you have. And 
So my biggest thing, and Bradley had to teach me that, was, you know, don't make it a 1024 by 1024. Make it a 12 by 12 scaler. And it just, it saves so much of the workload on the system. And that was probably my biggest mistake, and John's been making a mistake with the levels. And it's something we're learning as we go because we're looking at it in a different medium now. It's not, oh, I can make it the way I want as long as I can, you know, retopologize it down to 2,000 polys. So it's just, it was a learning curve from swapping. Which is funny because people are like, oh, you know, 2D is easier. And I don't I don't think it really is. I think you have to have a mindset for either one. Yeah, 2D right. is so much different, though, especially in animation. Yeah, it's like those people, you know, those, especially those people who can do 3D modeling but can't draw. Yeah. And vice versa. It's not that one's harder than the other. It's just whichever one you take to, whichever fits you better. You know? Yeah, everything takes fun. different effort. Yeah, exactly. And then that's, I, I think it's a big move people to change when you've gone to a game design college where you're learning how to make things yeah. and then you're now getting to the point where you want to make an entire game yeah. and you have to start learning your process not we never not only I'm not smashing back I'm just saying we just we, not, we didn't really learn a way to create games and now we have to not only learn how to create games but we have to learn our own way of making games yeah because they, 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 they put forward the tools and yes. they didn't really give us people the big thing with the the industry not being defined yet you know yeah. we don't have it unionized we don't have a set way of doing certain things it's all you have to figure it out and kind of morph the tools to work in your favor and it's definitely been a learning curve that I think everyone has to get over and it's the companies that can go get over that that are the ones that are going to succeed so yeah. okay and uh, the last question is uh, do you have a set date of when LG Play is coming out? Not a set date. We're shooting for quarter two of next year. Um, we'd like to make it earlier. That's why we don't have a set date. Um, but we're just we're aiming around there for the hundred level mark, and just because a lot of it is going to be now that we have the base game, it's going to be updating our assets and then just building new levels, adding in new features. Um, I'm going to tweak the animations more, and then once certain updates come out for Spine, I might tweak the animations even more because I can add you know cooler effects then. Um, so we're kind of limited with what that program can do right now, but it's honestly amazing. But they're adding, like, um, UV texturing, too, okay. where for 2D, you can make it look like 2.5D just by simply um, moving the UVs, and it's going to actually move as if it's, like, a 3D object. That's cool. Yeah, so a lot of the stuff that the program will be able to do is going to be amazing, and I'm, I'm excited, and I know the game's going to change as the program changes. So. Yeah, because yeah, I know because I tried making a game with uh, two other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tried to make uh, Octus. It was a 2D platformer and all that stuff. And I had a horrible time thinking of levels yeah. because I wanted each planet to have 10 levels and there was like eight planets. And I just couldn't think of any other level. Like, how, how do I build this level? Like, yeah, it's like, exactly. it's like you're, you're like, oh, this is an amazing scope that I want to do. But then you're like, Oh wait! I need to not make them copy and paste with yeah. different backgrounds. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, that's not my job. I don't have to worry about levels. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, that's not my job either. Don't worry. So I'm gonna ask the tougher questions for you personally now. Okay. Um, you you you've got this ambition, like you said, the scope of 100 levels. Mm-hmm. Um, at what point do you, are you do you think you're going to realize 100 is too much? Because if you think of the scope of it, um, 100 levels in a game that you're first creating. Mm-hmm. It goes from the point of making a really good idea to stretching it to have consistent content. You have, you have to understand the, the context of the levels, though. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more of the Super Meat Boy levels, where each yeah. level is broken down into sub-levels. Mm-hmm. So, on a level that you make, you know, of this certain scale, which, you know, obviously, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, see on the podcast, when you make a Following. level of 1024 to 1024, say, um, you break it down into segments of 256, 256. And so instead of having one big level, you have certain segments of the level. So, it, 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 so you're talking about stages. Exactly. Okay. You're do, we're doing more of a stage setup for each level, um, but we're going to call them levels just kind of like uh, Super Meat Boy does. You know, okay. There's literally those levels where it's just one jump. Okay, that makes that makes okay. it yeah, exactly. Because a hundred levels, I'm like, damn, this game is never gonna end, is it? Yeah, <laughs> no, no. It's it's definitely gonna be more of like the sub levels and different stages of the levels. Um, we're gonna break down them into like you know, there's the outside in the snow. Uh, you're in the cafeteria. You're in the gym. You know, because it's a vocational style of school. So there's gonna be home ec. There's gonna be you know 
all, all those different types of classrooms, and each one's going to have their own features. Yeah. So in certain classes, there's going to be coffee. Like, the teacher's going to have coffee, and if you jump into the coffee, El Chico, they will be able to jump faster, and he'll be able to, like, you can... Because right now you can't you can't flick him while he's in the air, mm-hmm. so there are going to be upgrades where you can flick him in the air too and stuff like that. Because we didn't want to make that a main feature, we want to make it an upgrade. Because at some of the levels it would break if you were able to do yeah. that, it wouldn't be fair. So. Agreed. Okay, that puts my mind to ease a lot. Okay. Yeah. Um, Try. Yeah, trust me. I mean, a lot of people hear hundred, they're like, "What the hell are you talking about?" It's like, <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's a lot more simplistic than you think. <laughs> so have you gotten to the point where you? You're, you're doing El Chicle now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you're trying to figure out the best way to publish it. So at what point do you start to think um, you want to start marketing on Facebook, um, starting pages on websites, mm-hmm. obviously the podcast. Though we're just starting and we don't have like many views. To all three of you, I still love you. <laughs> um, at what point do you start looking, well, sh- shifting your focus on what to Market first. Yeah. You want to start? Um, well, I've been I've been tackling a lot of the marketing myself. Um, already on Twitter, I found a bunch of hashtags that connect everybody to indie developers. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been passing it on to them, and they've been passing my game. I'll pass their game. So we've been really connecting through there. Facebook, we we have a decent amount of likes for a game that's just starting out, but we're pushing that. Our big thing is going to be Twitch. We really yeah. like the idea of Twitch and developing in the game and letting people watch it and getting. You know, doing giveaways and stuff like that. Um, we've already had multiple websites uh, do previews of the game at this point. Um, we have other websites that we've been talking to um, where they're, you know, they want the upcoming demos so they can really see how the game flourishes and stuff like that. And eventually, you know, we're going to have multiple websites doing reviews. So we, one thing I always do, and I know this sounds bad, but every single day I go on Google and I just I Google El Chicle <laughs> just to see if there's anything new. Yeah. And it's just because I want to see if it's growing. And every single day I'll see another edition. I'll see another edition where it's like somebody talking about it, somebody quoting the, the article that it was previewed in. And like that is, that's what makes us keep wanting to work. So it's like I love doing marketing because, you know, it, it does stink because you put something out there and it's, it's everything you've been working on. And you're like, okay, hate it or love it. And generally, you know, you get the hate and you're like, oh, well, I don't want to do this. Yeah, well, it's, really, doing this it's really nice when people are like, oh, this game was awesome. I played it at PAX. Um, I really enjoyed it. You guys should check it out. Or like when we were at PAX and we were walking around, and when we went to leave PAX on Sunday, we saw a person with an El Chico poster, a person with uh, a pin. A couple of times we were walking by people, and the guys, we heard this one guy saying, like, um, it's, a, it's a game about gum? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I know it sounds dumb. He's like, but you have to try it. The game's really, really fun. And I was like, just hearing people talk about the game, it puts it in reality for you. Yeah, and no. just, so I like the, you know, the word of mouth marketing, but I, I do what, I do know what you're saying. We're looking into a lot of stuff like that. This summer, we're looking into a Kickstarter, um, just because we really want to be able to push that, and we're going to have like special editions and everything for people to try out. But we just really wanted to get the the first demo out this summer and start doing that and see what kind of features people want, so we know what kind of scope we can actually choose for the game. So, okay, um, have you gotten any? You you talked about the true the like the almost three negative things you got. Um, were any of them traumatic? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I don't think so. I mean, they might have been uh, to John because some of the critiques were about his levels. But I, he took them in stride, and he was like, "This is what I want. I wanted feedback," and he seemed sincere about it. The other thing we wanted to go in there, and no matter what people said, we were going to take it construct um, you know constructively right. yeah, and just and look at it and. Build the game for the consumer. So, I don't think we had anything that was super bad. Like I said, literally the, the worst one we had was the level was too long. Yeah. So, I mean, I wish we had gotten more feedback, but I mean, I don't know if it was just that people liked it that much or they just didn't want to say anything bad. But, like I said, I, I felt pretty good about it. And people genuinely seem to enjoy the game when they're playing. Because, you know, when, when somebody's playing a game, they can you can tell that they're just playing it. To, yeah. to appease somebody, yeah. they like they actually were getting into it, and that's that's what I enjoy. I think the biggest thing that um, would be my the biggest negative feedback that you're talking about would be those people that came up and they just seemed like they were you know appeasing yeah, sure. me by playing the game. That was the biggest negative feedback I got. I'm like, well, clearly it's not fun enough for you, so yeah. we have to figure that out. Yeah, but. Uh, it's a it's it's a tough question to ask. That's why I bring it up because mm-hmm. we are in the most instant communication market. Yeah, we're in the industry where everyone has an opinion. 
Yeah, everyone, <laughs> everyone has an opinion, and you'll find out, like, in an instant. And if they don't tell you, you'll find out on forums, yeah. Facebook. And it's never in the best. And gamers are in the... It's not a... It's not a... I don't mean to condescend, but we're in a point where nothing makes us happy anymore. No. And we all... <laughs> every, like, the um, industry has become so accessible for certain people yeah. that everyone knows exactly what should be in a game and it's like okay well you're not you're not working on games so yeah. I mean the, like the thing is is they all know exactly what they want in the game yeah. um, but then sometimes their demands are just outrageous absurd. yeah and they would break the gameplay or they just wouldn't fit the, the style of the game so it's I, I think a lot of people lose context because they get blinded by their own um, wants from it so it, it's it's something that we also have to decipher because we have to be able to take those ones and take them, you know, take the actual feedback that we can use out of it. Yeah. So it's like you go on the you go on the the comment section and it's like these guys are pieces of shit, blah 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 blah, <laughs> and you're like, oh well, he did say he didn't like the first level. That's something we can work on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it's like, what are, what are you going to do there? So I think you you have to speak fluent gamer. Yeah. To to be in this industry. Yeah, I agree. A lot of people just shut down, but I, yeah, it's it's like one hundred percent what you said. You have to take what reason they decided to go off on you, yeah, and then make the best of it. Because hopefully they have a reason, and if they don't, they're probably just trolling you. Yeah, and you just you move on. Yeah, yeah so. we've been in, we've been in it long enough to be one of those people also to have to give bad critiques. Yeah, where I like I, I'm gonna say right now, like there's tons of games like I used to love Assassin's Creed, but I will. Bad mouth any new Assassin's Creed that comes out because it's Assassin's Creed. Yeah. And See, like my, I, I will say one thing. It's it's funny once you start doing some things um, in the industry, just because you look at games completely different. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'll, I'll Borderlands Two is one of my favorite games of all time and always will be. And I'm playing and I'm I'm in the last one of the um, the the I'm sorry the angel boss fight. Yeah. And when when Roland's climbing up the wall, I'm like, that animation doesn't make sense. He's just kind of like sliding up the wall a little bit with a little bit of hand movements. And it's just the way you look at certain things about games where that wouldn't be noticed. You just you, you see in a bigger spectrum of things, which is it's kind of cool. It's, it's kind of cool to look at games in a different way. And it also gives you a way to effectively critique them. Because before you're like, I don't really like this game. And then your friend would be like, well, why don't you? You'd be like, I don't know. I just don't like it. Now you can be like, well, it's this, yeah, this, and this. this is, I would agree. I think that's, that's all the questions I really have. Um, it's basically where we're at now. Yeah. It's one of the yet another insight on uh, the yeah. industry. And Coming the up and everything. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah, so this is Cody um, with Section Games. Take a look at his game, El Chiclet. You can follow the links at... What? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have um, a website or anything? Well, right now, we're actually, we're... We have a temp website, um, so oh, we're, we're moving it over to a full one. But actually, every link that you would like to find is um, posted on our Facebook um, Facebook website, I guess you would say, the you Facebook follow, page. Do you which, read your emails? What? You read your emails. We do we read our emails, yeah. Okay. Um, so you can actually go ahead and email us at team at sectioned-games.com, um, and we, we read through every single email of any feedback. And check us out on Facebook. It's just Section Games. You can look, you'll see a little El Chico icon right on there. Just like us so you can follow everything. We have all of our links to our temp website. Um, once we update to the actual website, our Twitter account's on there. Um, and you'll see all the events that we're going to throughout the year and the people we're talking to and the other indie, indie devs. Um, like we've been, like when we went to the Microsoft thing, they were tweeting about us so and vice versa. So you'll be able to see all the updates like that. Okay. Yeah, and I'll put all the links in the description as well. All right, cool. Have any last comments you want to say? No, I mean honestly, just keep playing games, <laughs> keep enjoying them, keep, keep telling us like Play my game. yeah, tell <laughs> tell us tell us what sucks because sometimes you look at a game for so long we don't know anymore. Yeah, and it helps. <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. All right. Exactly. Okay. Well, that's that concludes today po- today's podcast. Uh, make sure you share, like, and favorite this video. I don't know. But, uh, well, you can like them now. Yeah. You can still favorite them, but yeah, it doesn't right. matter. They can be your favorite. If they're... You can get forced over to Google+. Plus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can be your hero, though. Uh, and uh, make sure you subscribe, and we'll be doing more interviews with other companies, hopefully, later on. So uh, we will see you guys later, and uh, 
Yeah, check out Cody. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. 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 Hashtag